Hi, and welcome to the Archives of Warcraft, a series where we look at old vanilla dungeons and specifically the features in them that have long since lost any meaning, but they're still there today, so we just go through and explain what they originally were for. If you want to see others in the series, then click on the link in the top left and that will take you to the main playlist. This week we're going to look at the first place our character would have discovered evidence that the Titans even existed. They were mythical creatures up until this point. I am, of course, talking about Alderman. Like all dungeons in vanilla, Alderman could be done in different orders and you wouldn't necessarily do every boss in the dungeon. It was far from linear. But one of the most um, endearing aspects to the dungeon is the Indiana Jones type situation where you place a staff into a model of a, a city, which we assume is Alderman. I assume it's Alderman anyway. And of course, in the Raiders of Last Ark film, it points out the place uh, where you dig to find the Ark. But of course, in this one, it opens up the doors to one of the bosses. Now, now we just click on this staff, it's already in place. At the time it was not, you had to gather it. There were two parts to this staff, and the main staff and a medallion, which dropped off two different bosses which you would have to loot first. Elsewhere in the dungeon, there is also a tome that actually tells you what you need to do with these. Now my endearing memory of this particular thing is that the boss could actually drop some reasonable uh, male braces, I believe, strength braces. Uh, this was just before level 40. It was late level 30 you'd be doing this. And I remember a hunter uh, needing on them, which is fine. Um, a survival hunter. This was at a time when the idea of melee hunters was something to be derided. Of course, now as Legion comes into it, they're going to gain some respectability. While you're wandering near the start, you may see what looks like an undead warrior uh, dead on the ground. In actual fact, it's a paladin, and in fact it highlights itself as remains of a paladin. If you were Alliance, it's quite likely, back in vanilla times, you would have deliberately gone there to find it, because there was a quest that started with a random drop from some mobs outside the instanced area that sends you in there, first of all, to find a, a journal um, where the paladin has located three gems in a shattered necklace that you actually find which starts you off on the, the quest uh, and these are stashed away in, in like an urn and a chest and uh, drop off a boss and then you need to kill uh, one of the constructs to actually get a power source to make the neck magical uh, and of course you get that then as a quest reward. One of the most curious events you may notice is after you clear a particular area of scorpids um, an enchanting trainer pops out. Strange place for a trainer, you might think. We have to bear in mind, during Vanilla, trainers didn't work as they do now. Now, if you need to go to the enchanting trainer or blacksmith trainer or whatever other trainer, you just go to the nearest city and just find the trainer there. This isn't how it worked back then. For example, when you got to between 50 and 75 in a particular skill, you had to seek out what was, I think, called the expert trainer. After that, it was the artisan trainer. And then when you were between 200 and 225 skill, to go any higher than 225, you had to find the master. And there was only one. And for enchanting, this was it. Um, so when you wanted to learn the extra patterns or wanted, when you wanted to be able to go beyond 225 skill, you had to get a group to go into Alderman, to go into this part of Alderman specifically, uh, which not everyone would necessarily go past, um, to actually access the trainer. Um, there is no other master that required this as, as far as I know. This is the only one. But there are still some trainers, or the remains of trainers still out in the world somewhere. Take, for example, in Searing Gorge, this what looks like someone webbed and rolling around there you can't click on them or anything like this this we assume is sarah tanner because in this very spot um during vanilla that's where this npc was who was the artisan elemental leather working npc which is a branch of leather working 
um, that you could craft intellect leather gear for. At the point we're at now in the game, of course, we know all about Titans. The evidence has turned into very solid proof, having talked to and fought against uh, many of their guardians and constructs. But at the time of Vanilla, although we as players knew that these things existed, our actual character didn't. Alderman, as I noted at the beginning, was the first place where you really came across strong evidence that they even existed at all. It would have been something of a surprise to the Explorers League, certainly as Alliance, uh, in the Dwarven uh, city of Ironforge. So you take these discs, you discover all sorts of things. You discover, for example, that dwarves were descended from the earthen and that so were trogs. And you now what you can do, just as before, you get a quest with the discs and you take it back to someone who's interested. But all they do is give you a quest reward. Now at the time, you took it back to Ironforge and there was some talk about Oldham. Now at Oldham there is a place called Valley of the Watchers and the time I spent in southern Tanaris just trying to find a way through this, trying to work out what I was supposed to do if I was supposed to find something else, um, I don't even know how long I spent doing that. Of course there was nothing there, it just ended there, it just sort of directed you towards that. Oldham was not accessible, it did not come ac become accessible until Cataclysm. Now of course it's all open um, and it's all open a good deal away from Valley of the Watchers. The Valley of the Watchers itself has changed now as well. It's all opened up and there's just an instance through there and it's not at all the way into Alden. But uh, at the time, yes, it, it really did fire off this spirit of exploration. I, I spent a long time trying to just find some clue because not all quests were in the form of you need this quest reward. Sometimes you just got an NPC telling you that there was something somewhere and you had to go and find it. As a complete aside, just before I finish off, and got nothing to do with Alderman, a great example of a quest like this was given by Grimboo's Thunderbrew in Westfall, who's still there but doesn't do anything now. And he sent you all over the world with nothing more than a riddle to find what he actually wanted. Um, and after doing several stages of this, you received the awesome boot flask, which to my shame, I no longer have. I've got rid of it in the past, but as I've noted in, in videos like this before, trinkets were a bit of a rarity as you were levelling up originally, and good ones even more so, and this was a very good one. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and share it wherever you think other people might be interested. If you want to see some of the others, there's quite a few in the series now, we're sort of running towards the end of this then you can click on the playlist. I put a link at the start of the video, but there's also one in the comments below if you want to see the others. Till next time, I'll see you later.